Hi. Um, in 2012, I was hired as a writer on a sort of, uh, sort of reality TV game show aimed at a conservative Christian audience called The American Bible Challenge with Jeff Foxworthy. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> Our job was to write exciting, family-friendly questions about the Bible. I'm just going to let you sit with that for a second. Now, I'd been raised a conservative Christian. I had studied the Bible in college, but I'd never worked in TV before. And so when I came to our producer with our very first, like, mid-level Bible question, she shook her head and said, that's a who cares question. That was my first lesson. On TV, not all trivia is the same. There are who cares questions, and you don't want those. You need, you know, a, a game show succeeds when the person at home can play along. And that means you don't use numbers, those are dead. Uh, you don't use uh, obscure names or obscure places. You have to have something that people can relate to. And uh, you wouldn't think this would be a problem because the Bible is very, very large. <laughs> I do it all. <clears throat> um, 60, your average Bible has about 66 books uh, you know, and uh, well over 1,000 pages. But if you really look at it with a gimlet eye, you know, with ratings in mind, thinking, is this a who cares question? <laughs> you have to get rid of a surprising amount of it. <laughs> we did most of our shopping in about 14 books. Uh, these were the ones with people we'd actually heard of doing things that made some kind of sense. <laughs> but when you get that, now this is just the interesting part of the Bible. We, haven't, we aren't done yet because now you also have to make sure it's family friendly. <laughs> and if you haven't read the Old Testament lately, <laughs> please be careful. Because if you're not careful, the second you wander off mainstream stories in the Old Testament, it's like an incest, concubines, genocide drinking game. <laughs> and so, you know, we couldn't use any of that stuff. In fact, we even had a, a, a word come from on high, from the network, don't even use the word concubine. Because they were terrified, you know, that, that, uh, that they would show something on TV, the kid would turn to his mom and go, Mommy, what's a concubine? And we would get angry letters from conservative Christians furious that we had, you know, exposed their children to the Bible. <laughs> as, a, as an interesting side note, by the way, we also couldn't talk about the crucifixion. Our, our, our producer said, people are eating. But even when we're that far along, there's still one final problem, and that's fact-checking. We have to fact-check every question. It makes sense. And uh, fact-checking raises so many special issues all at once. I'm going to handle it using one simple example you should all be familiar with. The nativity. Now, if you, every Christmas, you see these stories about like Joseph and Mary making the trek to Bethlehem from Nazareth, right? Uh, if you pause for a second and think, why were they traveling? Do you remember this? Luke chapter 2 says that when Quirinius was the governor of Syria, Caesar Augustus sent out a message that all the world should be taxed, and, or a census taken, depends on the translation, and that everyone had to travel to their ancestral homeland to be counted. Scholars have a couple questions about this. First, uh, Quirinius wasn't governor of Syria until at least 10 years after this. Uh, there is no record that Caesar Augustus ever released an edict like this. But most importantly, and most significantly, there has never been a census that ridiculous. <laughs> right? Like, because the, why in the world would you have a census that required people to go back to their ancestral homeland when the whole point of a census is to find out where you are now so we can get your tax money. <laughs> like, I, if you go back one generation for me, where's my ancestral homeland? Do I go back to Detroit or do I go to a Toronto? So uh, it, it has literally never made sense. But what's interesting is we see that story every year and it, we, don't, we just kind of swallow it. We're used to it. We don't think about it. The only people who get bothered by it are scholars 
and people who have to write quiz show questions. <laughs> because every single detail matters. That's what we're asking about. And oh, and there's an additional uh, uh, little uh, twist, by the way, that this is in the Gospel of Luke. In the Gospel of Matthew, telling the same story, uh, I, to I told you that uh, Joseph and Mary uh, start in uh, Nazareth and go to Bethlehem. In the book of Matthew, Joseph and Mary start in Bethlehem and wind up in Nazareth. You can make those two accounts sort of coincide, but not without a lot of narrative twisting. So we knew all this, but we can't say this to our audience, right? Our audience believes that the Bible is true and honest and straightforward and can be trusted. And we were supplying a need. I grew up a fundamentalist Christian. I know what it's like to feel like all of pop culture is arrayed against you in a hostile manner. And to see yourself just once being the hero of a show you know, where you're represented and you're you know, smart for knowing the Bible, I didn't want to like, walk in there and knock over stuff, so we had to keep quiet. It's a challenge. So, we lied. <clears throat> we we soft-pedaled the boring stuff. We, uh, we talked around the stuff that was not family-friendly. And we definitely, definitely did not talk about the contradictions in Scripture. Uh, and in the process, we sold to our Christian market the kind of wholesome, unified, you know, uh, exciting Bible that they actually believe in, and not the kind of messy, convoluted, fascinating Bible we actually have. Now, it worked. Uh, we went three seasons. The, the debut of our show had the highest ratings in the history of the Game Show Network. Uh, we, uh, we got nominated for two Emmys. Uh, two of our seasons are now on Netflix, last I checked. Uh, and I'm really, really proud of the work we did. I'm very, very glad we made all these people happy. But I gotta say, the experience has taught me that the evangelical Christian approach uh, to the Bible is very similar to America's approach in general to reality TV. <laughs> Which is to say, you have to accept its stories with a kind of willing, almost loving suspension of disbelief. Because if you actually saw the whole thing raw and uncut, you would never trust it blindly again. Thank you. <laughs>